Hey there, trivia treasure hunters. Welcome back to the channel where we dig deep into the absurdities of everyday life. Today, we're diving into something a bit heavier, China's currency ambitions and how they might just be giving the US dollar a run for its money, literally. Ready for a wild ride? Let's jump in. Now I know what you're thinking. Great, another financial lecture. But trust me, this is juicier than a soap opera. We've got power moves, global drama, and a currency battle that's spicier than your Aunt Lula Bell's secret chili recipe. So grab your popcorn and let's unravel this together. The rise of the yuan. All right, so let's start with the basics. Take a look at this. On the right, we have China's currency, the yuan. Shiny, isn't it? But don't be fooled by its looks. China has one clear goal to replace the US dollar as the world's reserve currency. And guess what? They're getting closer to that goal every day. Imagine this. It's like an epic arm wrestling match between the dollar and the yuan. Spoiler alert, the yuan has been hitting the gym and the dollar is starting to look like it skipped leg day. Again, let's break down their recent victories. In February, they convinced Iraq to ditch the dollar for trade. That's right, Iraq said, bye Felicia. Then in March, Brazil, the biggest economy in South America, followed suit. It's like they're forming a super squad of dollar ditchers. And just when you thought it couldn't get crazier, in April, Argentina jumped on the bandwagon. Next target, Saudi Arabia. It's like watching a domino effect, but with currencies. Remember when the elite said this could never happen? Well, plot twist. It's happening right now in real time. The clock is ticking, folks. But let's pause here for a second. Why is this such a big deal? Well, imagine if your favorite coffee shop suddenly stopped accepting cash and credit payments and switched strictly to cryptocurrencies. Awkward, right? That's essentially what's happening on a global scale, and it's shaking things up more than a caffeine overdose. And it's not just about pride or patriotism. The US dollar has been the go-to currency for global trade for decades. It's like the dependable friend who always has your back. But now the Yuan is trying to muscle in and steal the spotlight. And honestly, it's making quite the entrance. Think of it as a high-stakes game of musical chairs, and the Yuan just snagged a prime seat. Meanwhile, the dollar is left looking around like, wait, what just happened? Historical context of global currencies. To really understand what's happening, let's take a quick history lesson on global currencies. Historically, no currency has held the position of the world's reserve currency forever. From the Dutch Gilder in the 17th century to the British Pound in the 19th and early 20th centuries, each had its time to shine. But here's the kicker. Most global currencies have a life cycle of less than 100 years. The Dutch Gilder reigned for about 80 years, the British Pound for roughly 105 years. And the US dollar? Well, it's been the world's dominant currency since the Bretton Woods Agreement in 1944. That's a solid 80 years and counting. We've already outlived the typical lifespan of a global currency by historical standards. It's like driving a car way past its expected mileage and wondering why the engine's starting to sputter. The dollars had a good run, but history tells us that change is inevitable. Saudi Arabia and oil trade. Now, let's talk about Saudi Arabia. This country has been a key player in the oil market for decades, and historically, oil trade had to be done in US dollars, a system known as the petrodollar. This arrangement not only bolstered the dollar's dominance, but also tied global oil markets to the US economy. But here's the twist. Recently, Saudi Arabia has started to accept other currencies for oil trade. This shift marks a significant break from the tradition that made the dollar the undisputed king of the oil market. Imagine the chaos if your favorite pizza place, which only accepted cash for years, suddenly started taking payments in pizza slices from other shops. It's a game changer. This move by Saudi Arabia signals a broader trend of de-dollarization. Countries around the world are looking to reduce their dependency on the US dollar, and trading oil in other currencies is a huge step in that direction. 
the impact on the U.S. So what does this mean for the U.S.? In the coming weeks, the Chinese Communist Party plans to make an announcement that's going to hit the U.S. dollar like a Cat 5 hurricane. This could demolish America's financial markets and stun investors and business people alike. Stocks could drop by 80%. Certain money market funds, practically worthless overnight. That retirement fund you're counting on, not so safe anymore. Yeah, it's pretty scary. But don't just take my word for it. Elon Musk, Ray Dalio, and Stanley Druckenmiller, they've all sounded the alarm. In fact, Druckenmiller has already gone short on the US dollar. When billionaires start to panic, maybe we should too. So what can you do? First, take a deep breath. The best way to protect your wealth is to invest in gold, silver, and precious metals. Remember, if you can't physically hold it in your hands, you don't own it. If I were the devil, if I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness, and I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree, the. So I'd set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve. Do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions, just let those run wild. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing, I'd have judges promoting pornography, Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who wanted until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what'll you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. <laughs>